When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to seal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I place to hide I'm not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I There's power that can empty out a grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I morning. Grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My name is Pastor Matthias. Friends, welcome to worship here at Leroy UMZ. Friends, this morning we are making a number of changes to the way that we worship together. So this morning we are offering two in-person worship services here at the church at 9 and 10 30. Uh, however, our online service that you're watching now will continue to actually be pre-recorded rather than live streamed for the simple reason that we figured out we can do a lot more with a pre-recorded service than we can with live stream. And we know that many of you may not be able to join us in person just yet. So we want to make sure our online services are still as best as we can possibly make them. Uh, but finally, friends, I also wanted to announce that uh, we will be uh, joining together in communion still. And so if you would like to join us uh, in communion later on in the service, you can go ahead and start gathering together any bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, anything that you might have around the house so that you can join us from home when we get to that point in the service later on. But friends, at this time, I would invite us to center ourselves and to join our hearts and minds together wherever we may be as we go before the Lord our God in prayer. Please join me in prayer. Lamb of God, gather us in and let us encounter you in this moment. Wash us clean of all that is behind us. Prepare us for all that lies ahead of us. Join our lives together in the temple you prepare for us and help us to seek you in this time that we might be built on your grace. In Christ's name we pray.
The atmosphere is changing now For the Spirit of the Lord is here The evidence is all around That the Spirit of the Lord is here Overflow in this place Fill our hearts with your love, your love surrounds us. You're the reason we came to encounter your love, your love surrounds us. The atmosphere changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here the evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord is here overflow in this place fill our hearts with your love Brothers and sisters, we come now to a very sacred time that we carve out each week when we can divide out our burdens and our problems, that our burdens might be easier to carry, and when we can divide out our blessings, that we might share our joy with others. Friends, at this time, I would invite you, if you have a prayer, a burden, a blessing, something that you would like to share or lift up to the Lord, I'd invite you to go ahead and either share it down in our comment section, or you can always text it to me. My phone number, as always, is in the video description up above. But friends, a few particular prayers that we've been asked to lift up this morning. Uh, prayers have been asked for Marita's brother, Kevin, who is... Uh, facing a difficult transition and some new challenges at this time. Marita, we ask that 
a God who calms every storm might calm every storm in Kevin's life at this time. We ask that God might bring Kevin on to still waters and to a peaceful moment. Uh, friends, I'd also ask us to continue to pray for, well, we've had a number of prayer requests for a number of uh, brothers and sisters who are facing health challenges, uh, Rick Lona's, uh, Sonia's knee, the Taylor's. Uh, I'd ask us that we pray that, well, that Christ might breathe new life and new strength onto all of our brothers and sisters, that they might feel a new sense of power and purpose to guide them through every struggle and every trial that they may face. And finally, friends, we also have a great joy to share. Uh, that is that our new ceiling in the education wing is coming along wonderfully. All of the drywall is up, all of the patching is done, uh, and we've also started work on a new sump pump down in the basement. So, friends, we thank God for all that God is always up to here at Leroy UMC and all the ways God is always building us up as a church family. Uh, and now, friends, I would invite you to actually join with me in a moment of prayer, at the end of which I would invite you to say the Lord's Prayer whenever you may watch this video. But friends, please join with me in prayer. Holy Lord, you are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? What shall we be afraid of? Lord, may you be the light of all of our days. May you be our rock that we stand on. May you give us strength and give us peace and give us purpose to keep on building in the face of every burden that weighs down on our shoulders. And may you lift us up to joys we cannot even begin to imagine. Lord, may you take all of the struggles and all of the praises that we have to offer out loud and silently in the stillness of our minds. And may you be our God, and may you be our Lamb every day and every week that is to come. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Friends, this morning we are bringing our sermon series, Building by Faith, to a close. Uh, and our final reading comes to us from the book of Ezra, chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, and then skipping over to verses 19 and 21. Friends, listen now for the word of the Lord. They finished building the temple according to the command of the God of Israel and the decrees of Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, kings of Persia. The temple was completed on the third day of the month of Adar, in the sixth year of the reign of King Darius. And on the fourteenth day of the first month, the exiles celebrated the Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were all ceremonially clean. The Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the exiles, for their relatives, the priests, and for themselves. So the Israelites who had returned from the exile ate it together with all who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of their Gentile neighbors in order to seek the Lord, the God of Israel. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. Eternal God, let the scriptures that you have inspired inspire us. Let the word that you are enlighten us, and let the gospel you proclaim be good news for us. Amen. It had taken 15 years of sacrifice and struggle, of fear and worship, of regret and love, and of relentless faith, but finally, 
In the year 521 B.C., the Jewish exiles put the last stone into the second temple of Jerusalem. And while it was just as ecstatic and joyful of a moment as you might imagine, when the temple was finished, the people also suddenly found themselves confronted by a question that they hadn't really had to face in those 15 years of construction, but which now was inescapable, namely, who was all of this for? Who exactly was supposed to worship in this new temple that they had sacrificed so much to create? Who were the men and women that they had imagined would be united as God's people in this place? Was it the priests who were pure and holy enough to tend to the Holy of Holies? Was it the exiles themselves who had put all their sweat and blood into every stone? Was it for people of a certain mindset? If so, which one? Was it only for the devout? If so, how devout? It's a simple question, but one that does not have a simple answer. Who have the exiles been building by faith for? And the thing that brings this question, I guess, kind of to a head, the thing that makes it so pressing was the celebration of the first Passover in the new temple. Passover is a ritual that went to the heart of the exiles' faith. It, it was something that reminded them every year that they were God's chosen children, joined together as one people united as they shared the great symbol at the heart of Passover, the Lamb. The Lamb that they sacrificed and shared together as God's people. They were a people of the Lamb. And it was the Lamb specifically that brought the question of belonging to a head. Whoever they've been building for determines who gets to join God's people in sharing in the Lamb of God. And so it is significant that right in the middle of this incomprehensibly holy moment, Ezra tells us, the Levites slaughtered the Passover lamb for the exiles, for their relatives, and for themselves, and all the Israelites ate it together with all those who had separated themselves from the unclean practices of the neighboring people in order to seek the Lord. The first Passover of the new temple was not just celebrated by the lifelong devout Israelites that we expect to see, but by local non-Israelites, by former Pagans, in fact, who had chosen to leave behind their past in order to seek the Lord. And while that is certainly a beautiful, almost utopian image, it does beg the follow-up question, why them? I mean, honestly, these locals, these pagans, hadn't sacrificed for this temple. They hadn't given up everything, marched across a desert, and labored for 15 years like the exiles had. These foreigners didn't know the Torah laws. They didn't understand all of the rituals. On the contrary, these people had lived in immoral, selfish ways for maybe most of their lives. More than that, they were, until quite recently, threats to the exiles. So why should they be there? Why should they eat the Passover lamb? How can these unknown strangers, how can they be the ones that the people have been building by faith for? And that is a relevant question. We may not be exiles and we may not know pagans, but we all have theys 
in our lives. We all have people that we don't understand, can't stand, or won't stand with. Especially today, it, it almost feels like we're living in an age of theys, when we're pressed and pushed to take a side, look across the aisle, and wonder, who in the world are they? How can they live like that? How can they think like that? Just like the exiles, we all see theys around us who we are told to fear, to keep away from, and who it might be hard to imagine celebrating a Passover with, sharing a lamb with, let alone sacrificing and building something for. When I think about theys and building and lambs and all the imagery that Ezra brings up in this passage, I think about prison, literally, in fact. So before coming here, when I was at seminary in New Jersey, I did my field education at a youth correctional facility with the chaplain there, uh, and it was a facility that housed guys between the ages of 18 and 29. And it was this really old facility. It was built sometime in the 60s, and it was, shall we say, in somewhat urgent need of renovations. The chapel itself that was at the center of this massive complex had floor tiles that were chipped. A few of the old stained glass panels in the windows were broken and covered up. The wood pews had stains, the stage was just bare wood, and starting in my second year, the ceiling actually began to leak rainwater that had mixed with black tar from the roof. And yet, for all of these little problems and needed repairs, the incredible thing that I was always impressed with was that no matter what broke, and no matter what repair needed to happen, every week there was the chaplain and his faithful group of chapel workers building it all back up again. They mopped up every puddle of black tar water. They scrubbed every stained pew. They replaced every broken tile. They covered the wooden stage in new carpet, and when the ceiling began to leak onto the new carpet, they put down buckets and scrubbed even harder. Whatever it took, whatever it cost, they never stopped building it all back up again. And the reason why is because every Sunday night, 70 to 80 guys would come together for Sunday worship and form one of the greatest gatherings of theys that you could ever imagine. There were brothers of every ethnicity, every social class, race, and background imaginable. There were Latino brothers who had newborn kids that they proudly would talk about and families who called in every day, and some of whom were documented citizens and some who were not. There were Haitians and Jamaicans and Dominican brothers who would pull you into a discussion about whatever philosopher they were learning about in class that week, and who are always eager to hear your interpretation of a particular Bible passage, and some who had scars from knives and bullets, and some whose scars ran much, much deeper than that. There were African-American brothers who were applying for a bachelor's degree after just wrapping up their associates and who talked about plans of becoming paralegals and preachers and teachers if they could, some who had been arrested for drug distribution, some for having no way to pay their families rent, some for honestly just being in the wrong place at the wrong time, maybe in the wrong skin. Interestingly, there were only a handful of white brothers, so few in fact that I noticed I could always count on my fingers the number of white faces in that crowd of 80, even though the population of whites was 75% of the state. 
interpret that as you will. But there they were, every Sunday evening, all of them from different backgrounds, different social classes, ethnicities, races, cities, and neighborhoods. Many had learned to be suspicious, to be cautious of others. Many had been taught to look at anyone not like them as a they to be careful of. And yet, every Sunday night, there they all were, sitting side by side in cracked prison chapel pews, lifting voices together with a passion I can't even begin to describe, lifting hands in prayer as one body, listening intently to the same gospel message of good news the chaplain preached. And on a special Sunday, once a month, this strange gathering of theys would all take individual communion cups, just like what we have here, and there, in a prison temple that was always being rebuilt by faith, they became God's us as they joined together in a lamb who was slain for each and every one of them. It took 15 years of sacrifice and struggle, of fear and worship, of regret and love, and of relentless faith for the exiles to build the second temple of Jerusalem. And when they finished and asked the question, who have we been building for, the answer wasn't so much for themselves as it was for strangers, for theys that the people did not even know yet. And when they gathered under the new temple roof to sacrifice the Passover lamb, they realized that it wasn't slain so much for themselves as for whoever they were. The neighbors that they were told to be afraid of and keep their distance from, and who were now coming to be their new brothers and their new sisters joined in a lamb that belonged just as much to them as it did to anyone. And when all is said and done, that may very well be the miraculous motivation behind it all. Behind Ezra's story, behind the exile's work, behind the second temple of Jerusalem, and behind the whole endeavor of building by faith. God awakens our minds and stirs our spirits to a vision of tomorrow with others. We worship when fear overtakes us in order to fix ourselves on a God who tells us that they aren't enemies to be afraid of. We transform our regrets in the steadfast love of a God that is so great that God would become a lamb to be sacrificed for you and for me and for them, whoever they are, and we build by faith day by day in all that we are, not just for ourselves, but for every they the world tells us to distrust and to keep away from, but who one day will come to join us here in this temple to seek the Lord, to find grace, and to join with us in the Lamb who died, that we and they might live. Who do we build by faith for? Who gets to join God's people in the Passover Lamb that was slain? Who gets to come and be our brothers and sisters here? They do because it's God's temple that we build, and it's God's lamb that we have. And thanks be to God for it. Amen. Friends, please join me in prayer. 
Lamb of God, bless the temple that we build by our faith in you. Fill the rooms that we dedicate to your work. Sanctify the doors that we open by your power and love the souls that we welcome in your name. Holy God, call out and gather in every sinner, not just because they have fallen and need you, but because we have fallen and need you. And as we join ourselves together and as we share this holy lamb, let every them and they dissolve, leaving only us and you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, this morning we worship our Lord not only with our words, but by joining ourselves together as God's own people in the Lamb that died for us. Friends, at this time, if you wish to join us in communion, I would invite you to go ahead and find whatever bread, crackers, wine, grape juice, whatever you may have at home that could serve as communion elements. I would also invite you... Uh, as we go through the liturgy, to imitate me in raising the bread and raising the cup. And I would invite you to either serve yourself or to serve those around you with the words, the body of Christ broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. And just so you all know, I'm actually using one of the individual communion cups that we're using for our in-person services and that the brothers were using at that prison chapel. Uh, and finally, friends, just as a reminder, here in the United Methodist Church, we practice open communion, which means that all those who are willing may receive the elements and may join us. Communion belongs to the Lamb that was slain, and whoever you are, whatever you have turned from, if you seek the Lord, the Lamb is for you. And so, friends, please join with me. May the Lord be with, it, be with you. May we lift up our hearts to a God of mercy. May we give thanks to a creator who is faithful, for it is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, as you awaken our souls to plans and purposes that change our lives and our world, Messiah, as you imagine temples wide enough for all of your children, May you give us one heart, one mind, and one soul under you in this moment. Lord, let us feel your love for one another and for all those we have not yet brought into our lives as we find your grace that is sufficient and your mercy that is unending in the Lamb that we partake of together. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your children wherever we may be, and on these gifts of bread and wine that we worship with. Lord, make them for us the body and the blood of Christ Jesus, that we may be for the world the body of Christ. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, our Lord took bread. Gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. In the same way, when the supper was over, he took the cup. Gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. Holy Lord, it is in remembrance of your sacrifice for us in Jesus Christ that we partake of these elements, trusting in your grace to cover our faults and trusting your love to mold us into your children. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, I would invite you to partake of the elements.
Well, friends, before we have our offering, I did want to make an important announcement. So today is the last Sunday of our Building by Faith uh, project drive. Again, uh, this is something we've been doing for the past four weeks. We set a goal to raise $12,000 to cover the cost of three new projects to improve our facilities here at the church. We wanted to repaint the walls and put in new flooring in the top level of the education wing and then put in uh, new pew cushions here in the sanctuary. And after four weeks of uh, gathering folks' support for these projects, we can say that we officially raised over $14,020. We went well beyond our ultimate goal, which maybe means we can even do more. We'll have to see, but we cannot thank you all enough for your incredibly generous support, all of your kindness. This has been a, an amazing project drive to just see everyone's uh, support with and just speaks to how well, to how wonderful of a church family this is, that so many people would be willing to invest in the possibilities that our church has and to invest in those strange new brothers and sisters we haven't even met yet, but who one day will come and join us here. And so, again, we had better get ready for them. But friends, thank you all so much for your support. And with that wonderful news having been shared, let us join together as we continue to worship. Let us have our offering. One, two, three. You unravel me with the melody. You surround me with the song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. Well, friends, before we bring the service to a close, we just have one quick announcement for everyone. Uh, this evening at 6 o'clock, 
We will be having a very short outdoor communion service uh, for those who feel more comfortable worshiping uh, spread out outside uh, with COVID and everything that's going on. It will be over at Howard Virgin State Park at the little pavilion there. Uh, you can't miss us. It'll be at six o'clock, just maybe a 20 minute service. Um, but again, that's for folks who might feel more comfortable worshiping in that space. Uh, but feel free to join us for that. And then just a reminder, next Sunday we will continue to offer in-person worship for all those who feel comfortable or able at 9 o'clock and at 10.30. But friends, with those announcements having been said, I would invite you to receive the final blessing. Now go forth into the world to find the theys in your life, the ones that you never really knew, but the ones that God is calling you to love, is calling you to invite inside, and is calling you to call a brother and a sister in the Lamb who was slain for us all, and the Lamb of grace who loves us all. Go forth, and may the blessing of Almighty God be with each and every one of you now and evermore. Amen. Friends, the service is ended. Go in peace. When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to seal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken